Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hey, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Ricky Mandel. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. On this week's show, we're going to be talking about should you become business partners with your partner. If you're a couple, should you team up or should you do your own thing? Now, this is a really interesting topic because uh, we were just talking about this, weren't we? A lot of people, they team up with someone, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a family member, and they're very, very quick to form a business partnership. However, I think that when you go into business partnership with someone, it is literally as important as when you choose who you're gonna marry. Like, it literally, for me, is that important because you are entering into a partnership for your business, which is one of the most important areas of your life. Um, so, what are, your, what are your initial thoughts on this? Are you, are you, are you in business partnership with your partner, who's Perry? Um, I am in business with her in certain aspects, to an extent, I guess. So, we, do, we invest together. You invest but together. We have separate businesses, active income businesses that bring the money in to invest. So, w- what made you decide to go that route? Like, because a lot of people, when they're in a in a relationship, like you live together, you're engaged, you're in a long-term relationship. How long have you guys been together now? Nearly eight years. Nearly eight years. That's a long-term relationship. You share a house. What What made you decide to have your own separate businesses? Well, when, we, when I started to get into property, that was my business that I'd started. And when I was getting into property, she already had her own business that she was building and growing. So as time's gone on, we've both scaled up our businesses. And now we're in a position today where I have my business and she has her business. And then we take profits from the, both businesses to then invest together into properties. So I guess we haven't... I mean, the reason that we haven't kind of just put everything together and gone right straight down the middle is we haven't really had that conversation yet because we've both been snowballing up until this point. Another thing is her, some aspects of her business are um, branding. She's the brand, or she's the face of her business. So for me, to, I know, it's, and it's why it's interesting because you and Samuel are business partners and it's almost similar to you guys because Samuel's the face of the business yeah so I don't know it's a tricky one I'm not sure we haven't had that conversation yet because we've just been you know scaling for the last six years yeah that that makes, been doing property that makes sense well, when myself and Samuel went into business partnership together obviously we're brothers so I knew him super well however we didn't take the decision to go into business together lightly at all so the first thing I would say is I knew what he was about as a business partner before we teamed up, right? So we both set up our own businesses. Uh, I, I, I ran my own business from the age of sort of 18, 19. He was even younger, similar. Uh, and we didn't team up until about five years ago. So I'd have been late 20s at this point. So I'd got sort of 10 years of experience behind me, and so would he, where I could see what he could do, what he could bring to the table, what his traits were, how he worked, how, um, how he wanted, for example, to be the brand. How, you know, Samuel is a showman. He loves to be the star and the center of attention. That's, that's not me. And if I was like that, I'm not sure we'd work together very well. We kind of bring different things to the table, but even with all that being said, when we were muting the idea, it was still six months of negotiations. We still got solicitors involved. We still got contracts in place, even with with family, because we know that it's a really important decision. I think the thing is, what a lot of people do, especially when they're starting a property business, if you're starting something new, you're kind of teaming up, you're sort of, you're, you're undervaluing your business. You're undervaluing what you can bring because when you team up, you don't have anything, right? So giving someone 50% of what is nothing doesn't feel like a very big deal. Hey, let's be partners, let's team up. However, the more you grow your business, what I see a lot of people do, a lot of property investors will do, is they'll team up with someone and six months, a year down the line, it's starting to get successful. They've poured a year of work and effort into this business. 
And they've realized during this year that the person that they're in business with isn't actually very good. Yeah. And now they're stuck. Because it's like, I've put a year of time and effort into this business, but this other person that I don't really want to work with anymore, it might be longer than a year, it could be two years, three years, four years, but this person now owns half of it. So when you gave it away at the beginning, it felt like nothing because it wasn't anything. But you're pouring all your time, effort, and energy into that. Um, and, and therefore, in a situation where they now own half of it, and you're stuck, what do you do? Yeah. Another, another thing is, I'm not sure, like right now, when you went into business with Samuel, did you, you had your own business in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Did you, what did you, so did you close that business down to go fully in with well, Samuel? Well, I had another business partner that I was working with. So that was difficult then because I was in a situation where I wanted to go and work with Samuel. I wanted to move full time into property. I still own the entertainment agency. So I sold my half right. to my business partner. This is where it gets interesting because if I'm going to go into business with Perry and we're going to go all in together, I've got my business at the moment, she's got hers. I feel it's going to have to be, there's going to have to be a sacrifice or somewhere. There's going to have to be a compromise where which business are we going to go in on and which ones, because I can't, it's going to be difficult to do the businesses that we have and just go 50 50 on all of them. But if you, like you and Samuel came in on the property side of things, your entertainment agency, you sold your part of it and you, what kind of, you know, wash your hands of it, finished. But I wouldn't be able to do that because we've got a property business, she's got her fashion business. So it's an interesting one. Well, me and myself and Samuel with our businesses, we, we go 50 50 on everything. So our property development, um, our, you know, our finance company that we've just set up, the training company, everything we do, we are 50 50 on. However, I also share everything with my wife, Anna. And I also work with her on everything. So the personal properties that we bought beforehand, my half of the business with Samuel, I see as 25% because Anna has the other 25%. So it's quite different to you. Yeah. Because you're, you, you're, you're sad, but do you guys share money? Um, we don't share money. We have her business, my business, my accounts, her accounts. What we do do is we go 50-50 on all of expen well, personal expenses and stuff like that, but my money is mine, so if and hers is hers. If you're going on a holiday together, who pays for it? Well, it, it depends what we do. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it's, a, if it's a birthday or something, then you know, we'll treat each other, but well, generally, if we just want to go on a holiday, then we'll take it in turns to pay for the holiday, if it's just a holiday. So she might pay for one holiday, then I'll pay for the next one, she'll pay, for, unless it's like a birthday or a special occasion that we're paying for, and then the flights, I pay for my own flights and she'll pay for her own flights. So literally going together, you will go on and book your own flight, book it, and then she'll go on and book her own flight and pay for it? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That is, I mean, I'm not, I don't well, think... Well, because, you know, it's not just because I want to be, you know, like, oh, it's my, it's, you know, there are reasons for that. Go on. You don't well, want to sit anywhere near her. <laughs> yeah, no, but also, you know, when um, I might tie in a holiday with a business meeting, and she might want to tie in the holiday with the business meeting as well. So okay. it makes sense for me to put my flights through my business and for her to put her flights through her business. Okay. What about, uh, you, you both got your own cars? Yeah. You don't share cars? You pay for Oh, cars? no. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we share cars and we drive each other's cars. But, but it's her car. Yeah. She, like, that's her car. She makes payments for that. I make payments for mine. The you know, mortgage, bills, that, all of that's 50-50. Okay, that, that's quite interesting. See, I'm like very different to that. So, I mean, myself and Anne, I mean, we've been married now for 15 years. Um, and we actually got together when I was 14 and she was 13. I have to point out I was 14, the reason being, <laughs> she goes around telling people, so where, where, where uh, we live and where our kids go to school, or did go to school, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the dads are a lot older than the moms. So like the dads might be like 60 and the moms are like 40 or whatever. We're quite, we're quite young, but she goes around saying, like, oh yeah, I've been together with Russell since I was 13. And I'm like, ja, that is true. <laughs> However, I was 14 at the time. I'm not like the other dads here, you know, I wasn't like 33 at the time, okay. Uh, so I just have to point that out. Uh, but yeah, so we, we were together, we've been together like 20 years now. Uh, but we even had a joint savings account when we were like 15. 
Well, we all have a joint account. We but have that, a joint account. But that was our that was my money. All our money. We 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 clubbed it together even at that age. So if you if she goes shopping, which I know Anna likes shopping, right? And she goes and buys a load of clothes. That's coming out of your account as well. Yeah. All right. So what happens if one day she comes back and she's like, Russell, there was a big sale on in Chanel. And I've spent eight grand on a couple of new bags. I'd say it doesn't sound like much of a freaking sale. <laughs> so if she, if, she, if she goes out and she like, you know, yeah. let's say because, you know, my, like Perry likes handbags. Right. So, but she's, you know, obviously I buy her gifts and, you know, sometimes I'll treat it to a handbag. But it, it, what she, if, she wants, if, she, if she buys handbags, that's coming from her money that she's earned. So I guess the question is, if Anna wants to go and spend thousands of pounds in a shop, would you then, you'd get a notification, you'd be like, oh, oh my goodness, she's just spent five grand on a handbag. No, I wouldn't, I'll tell you why. Because what we do is we've got, we manage our money, so we have set accounts, so, we, so the money will come into our joint bank account, and then it immediately, standing orders, bang, bang, bang to different accounts. So we've got like our uh, holidays account, we've got our spending money on clothes account, for example. So if she wanted to buy a handbag, she would buy it out of the right account. If the money wasn't in, if the money was in there, I'd be cool with it. That's, yeah, go ahead. Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happens if it's like, you know, every month, it's like yeah, but, another, but, another 10 grand this but, month. On... But I've budgeted. To, to, so the only reason it would be a problem is if she was irresponsible with it, and was buying the, the Chanel handbag and then not able to buy the kids clothes, for example, right? Okay. But that whole, see, that whole side of my life, I leave pretty much to Anna. So I just trust her with the house, with, the, with looking after the kids. I'm still doing it, I'm still there. I'm still part of it, but she plans it. So how we sort of see it, and this is interesting, when, when I got my first business coach, we had a business coach, and there was four of us in the business, we had 25% each in the business. And our business coach said, right, you're all, you're all quarter owners of the business. However, we need job descriptions, you need job roles, who does what, who brings what to the table? Oh, and by the way, one of you has got to be the managing director of the business. Because ultimately, someone's got to make the decision if push comes to shove, right? Uh, so we had a vote, uh, and, and I ended up being the managing director of the business. Now, does that mean that I was more important than the other three? No. Does it mean I got more money than the other three? No. But it means that ultimately I was responsible. So even though myself and Anna are 50-50 on everything, we share money, we're totally equal, we've got different roles and responsibilities in the relationship. My, I'm MD, so to speak, of our business. So we work together, but ultimately I'm responsible for earning the money. Ultimately, I'm the breadwinner. That's my role in the relationship. Her role is to manage the house, look after the kids. She's responsible. Now, that means, in a way, she's my boss of that. If she says to me, I'm going out on Friday, you're watching the kids, I'm like, Cool, no problem. I don't ask. She tells me, right, right, what I'm doing. Ultimately, but actually she's responsible for it. I don't have to think about looking after the kids unless she tells me I have to. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So you're in business together, but, but it's kind of, there's different, it's not the straightforward, you It's different roles and responsibilities. The thing is, if you don't have different roles and responsibilities, what happens when you disagree? Who decides? Who's ultimately in charge? So what? So would you advise, Would you? What would you say to someone that is going to go into business with a, a their life partner? Would you say, well, one of you focus on making the money, and another one focus on kind of the home life? No, not not necessarily. No, I, I I would say what 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 are you bringing to the partnership? Whether whether it's a, a a friend, whether it's a brother, whether it's a partner, it's like okay, what 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 are our roles and responsibilities here? What are we gonna? How are we gonna do this? And and if you decide, for example, for you, what you've done, and I, I think that works as well, is you've gone, well, look, you're going to have your business, I'm going to have my business. That's cool. And then you don't have to think about it. But if you are going to team up together, I think you need a clear understanding going in 
of what are your role, like any, like any business partnership, what are your roles and responsibilities? Myself and Samuel, we're 50-50, right? Now, you might think if there's certain areas where I'll decide what we do. I'm the CEO of the business, right? So when it comes to, when it comes to hiring our staff, when it, a lot of decisions I make, but then other decisions, other areas of business, he makes the ultimate decision. Now, of course, we'll talk. It's not like a dictatorship. We'll debate, we'll sit down, we'll chat, we'll think it through. But for example, if it's, in, if it's what goes on the YouTube channel or the content of the, of the courses, he's ultimately responsible. It's his decision. So if you have, a, if you have an argument about it, which a healthy argument, because like yeah. I've seen you guys argue, and when people say, oh, you know, when you, hear, when you think they're having an argument, you think shouting at each other, but I've seen you two argue, and it is the most, it's the most fascinating thing, actually. Really? Yeah, it is because... I've said this from the moment I met you, I think you're a genius, right? And I think Samuel's also a genius, but when you argue, it's so calm and logical. And it's like, I've seen Samuel does this, um, there's an exercise that sometimes we do from, from stage, at one of our training programs where, you know, that we have to have like an argument on stage, like a debate. Um, and it's very similar to that where you argue with each other and you put each other's points across and you debate each other's points and then after it's like, hmm. If you agree with them and they win you over, it's like, fair enough, you've won me over. But what happens if, after the calm debate, you've put your points across, what happens if you still disagree? Do you just agree to disagree? Uh, we, that very rarely happens because normally one of us will get one over. The other thing that we often say is, we'll, we'll score it. So I'll say, look, I think that this is the right way. I'm about a four out of ten in how strong I am on this. And he'll say, I think about it too. I'm actually in hate. I'll go, all right, if you're that bothered, we'll go with you. So we, we, That's we, a good idea. So, you, so you're saying how strongly you feel about your point. Yeah. And if one person feels stronger than the other, it's like, well, fair enough. Yeah. I, he'll often say to me, he was like, look, I disagree with you, bro, but I'm not super strong on this. I'm only a four. Why are you? I go, I'm actually a six. I'll be honest, I am quite strong. He's like, all right. Because sometimes even these little things, but sometimes he will really, especially if it's branding, He'll be really strong about it, and I'll go, all right, you have it your way, bro. But ultimately, it depends on the department. We, the thing is, right, is when you go into business partnership with someone, or even when you hire someone, uh, I think Steve Jobs says, you don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. Mm. You hire smart people because they're smart and they'll know what to do, right? So when you're having a business, par a business partnership, you want to know what they're good at. I know what Simon's good at, he knows what I'm good at. If we're arguing over something that's in my territory, He'll go, oh, I disagree, but it's your call, man, and vice versa. Yeah, makes sense. But I think it's just having that understanding, and this, this is one of the reasons why we took a lot of time, you know, debating and deciding how it was going to work, what we are going to do, even though we knew each other, we were still we're doing personality tests, we're doing different types of tests, see what we were good at, what we were bad at. So did you have something in place where it was like, if after six months or a year, we don't think this is going to work out, did you have like an early exit plan? We, we've got an exit plan, yeah. And it's very important that you have an exit plan. Yeah. I haven't got an exit plan with Anna. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's a, that is a bit different. Because like me, myself and Samuel, we don't live, we're business partners, but we don't live together. It's like we both know it works for what we want it to do. But we both, let's say, for example, my life circumstances changed and I wanted to retire. Where does that leave us? We've got an exit strategy in place. So we've got something called a push and pull agreement. And how that works is, um, what if, let's say I wanted to exit the business. I would turn around to Samuel and I would say, I want to buy you out of the business. I'm offering you X amount of money. And then he's got a choice. He can either accept my offer or he has to buy me out for the amount that I tried to buy him out for. So what that means is that uh, and a great example of this, actually, when, when, when we were kids, um, quite often there'd be like one biscuit left or something. And it's like, oh, I want the biscuit, oh, I want the biscuit. And my mom used to have a rule where she said, one of you breaks the biscuit in half, the other one chooses which piece. Oh. Right? So then, if I'm the breaker, right, if I'm the biscuit breaker, I want it to be smack, bang, 50, 50. Because if I mess it up, and one of them was bigger, I know he's going to choose that one, right? Do you know why that's really tough? 
Why? Because sometimes when you break a biscuit, sometimes the natural force of the break makes it go one way. Oh, man. Oh, tell me about it. Or chocolate. It doesn't have to be a biscuit. It could be a chocolate bowl. Whatever. You've got one bag of crisps left. You pour it into a bowl. You're there. Trying, you know, trying to measure it. Trying to get it exactly right. Could you just uh, imagine? Put one crisp Could you just back. imagine, though? Uh, imagine, oh, I'd be so annoyed if I was the one breaking the biscuit and I broke it and I actually, my right hand was a bit too hard and it, you know. It well, won't. well, that's what this is though, isn't it? For the business, right? I'm looking at the business, I'm saying, oh, you pay me or I pay you X amount for the business. And then he's got to look at it and go, right, he's offering me this amount of money. On the other hand, I've got the business. Uh, so I want it to be fair if I'm offering it in because he could flip the cards on me, right? But at the same time, I don't want to go too low because then he might flip the cards on me and I've, I haven't got as much. So you're trying to make it as fair as possible. So that's what we've got. That's our agreement. And that kind of works across anything. Either of us want to leave the business, that's how it works. Um, with Anna, I don't have a exit clause because I don't plan on ever exiting it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... Um, so has there, has there been... Any, I'm just intrigued. Has there ever been a time where you have got that notification it's been like damn what what what's what, what she bought uh we are used to before we started managing the money correctly yeah because the thing is most relationships you'll have someone that's a saver and someone that's a spender right and i am more of a saver than anna so anna will spend more money than me right so sometimes i'll be like oh why did you why did you buy that and we used to not argue but there was a little bit of friction there when we started managing our money with the accounts in my head the second it goes into that account is blown on some crap right it's already been blown it's gone into it's gone into her clothes account <laughs> right it's blown it's already got on a chanel handbag or whatever it might be right so whatever she chooses to spend it on i don't mind so what do you spend your money on me personally yeah well obviously i i, I save money back to invest so i'm, I'm, I'm yeah but you've got your spend what do account. i blow my money on yeah um so what do i i blow my money on eating out right so like even like coffee like i'll go to I like, and it's, <laughs> I like like three Starbucks. It's like, oh wow, yeah, this month man, I'm gonna blow my money on a Starbucks. Well, I probably spend three hundred pound a month at Starbucks. What? Yeah, <laughs> with three coffees a day, every day. Have you got a loyalty card? I've got the app. I get quite a lot of free ones because I'm in there. Oh all my the time. gosh! But yeah, I probably spend about three hundred pound a month on Starbucks. Really? Yeah, I like Starbucks, man. <laughs> but. Three hundred pounds. Well, if you work it out, right, each drink's about four. Quid. Yeah, but three coffees a day from that's cr what the. You've seen me. I, I know, mean? but I thought it might have been the same cup all day. No, 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 no. I'll have three coffees a day. So every, I'll go to, in the morning. I'll go to Starbucks. Wow. So I drink a lot of coffee. Or oh, it's a bunch of Costa. I got a Lord's card for both. Um, so I do that. I we I also eat out a lot. So probably two meals a day I'll eat out. Normally breakfast and lunch, have dinner at home, sometimes. So I eat out lunch every day. So I spend quite a lot of money on food, but I like being out, I enjoy it, it's what I like doing, so that's that. Uh, cars, I spend quite a lot, I, just, I had a nightmare with my car. Well, How what? annoying is this, right? So you know I've got the, the Porsche taken, so you know I crashed it. Yeah. Yeah. So I crashed it, yeah, I was on my way to the gym, it was about half six in the morning, and near my house there's like this little tiny windy road that you can literally only get one car. You've got a few passing points, but most of the time it's one car. It's half six in the morning. You haven't had your coffee yet? I haven't had my coffee yet, I have it after gym, so I haven't had my coffee yet. So I'm on the way to the gym, and um, a car comes around the bend, same time as we both slam our brakes on, crash, right? It didn't feel that bad. It's probably going about 10 miles an hour when we hit. They're probably doing the same. But it was a head-on collision and it pushed the uh, the front of the bonnet into the wheel so the wheel wouldn't go around properly. So I rang Anna. I'm like, can you come pick me up? She's like, oh. And then wow. you were like, it's, it's your part of responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, do I have to? I said, let me see what, if I can drive this. So I was like driving along and the car, the wheel, was like, the whole car was like, like this. I was driving. I thought, this ain't very good, really. But I drove about 10 miles an hour the rest of the way to the gym. Called the AA. Anyway, this was like four and a half months ago. Right? So the car went in. They said to me, because um, it was your fault, we can't give you a like-for-like -like car, I'm afraid. I was like, all right. Break it to me, what are you going to give me? Citroen C1. <laughs> oh. I'm like, dude, dude, I'm giving you a Porsche. 
You're giving me back a situation. No, 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 no. They're like, sorry. And then the only other way you can do it, we can give you, uh, we've got an Audi A6, best car we've got, but you have to pay £50 a day for it. At the time, I'm thinking, week or two, £50 a day for it. Four and a half months, right? So I'm paying a grand and a half for an Audi A6. A grand and a half for a Porsche. I don't even have. I made three grand for an Audi A6. So when you do it back? Well, they keep saying it's going to be soon. Apparently next week. But I've been told that before, so we'll see. Well, it's lucky you're not a big spender on, like, you know, materialistic items. You'd be driving around a Citroen. Yeah, well, exactly. Your, your play money will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not particularly materialistic. I like cars. I like, I like my house. Um, but no, I'm not like, as you can probably tell... I'm not massively material. Not like you with your couture club stuff. Yeah, I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing the Samuel Leeds yeah. brands today. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like I like fashion. I like to. I, it depends what item it is. That like, I wouldn't spend thousands of pounds on a t-shirt. No. Because my weight fluctuates. I'll be, you know, I'll be like. I mean, I'm overweight now. Before you say anything. Yeah. But I'll be like more overweight than this for like four or five months and then I'll get sick of it and I'll be like, oh, and then I'll lose weight for six months but then I'll be sick of eating healthy. Do you know what the worst is for clothes buying though? Do you know when like you put on a bit of weight and all your clothes that you've got don't really fit you anymore but you're like, I don't want to commit to being a fat bastard. Yeah. Right? And if I buy clothes that fit me now, I'm committing to yeah. being a fat bastard. That's, right? No, but this is the predicament I'm in. I'm like, if I, like right now I'm a large with most clothing brands and I think if I went down to a medium, I'd be over the moon, but how long am I going to set a medium at for? Oh no, I don't think like that at all. See for me, I'm like, oh I'm going to be this slim for life and then I put the weight back on. <laughs> and then the clothes just live in the cupboard forever. Just, yeah, yeah, and then I'm like, I'm like, oh, like, and then I've thrown away, the other thing I do, right, is I throw away, as soon as, as, soon as something's too big for me, I throw it away. I'm like, ah. Oh. I'm like, I don't need that anymore. And then six months later, you're like, oh, where did I put it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. It's, it's, right, them, right. it's them three lattes a day. I can't believe you have three. Do no, you have no, lattes? I don't have lattes because I realised. So last, I used to have lattes, but when I, when I started losing weight again, last October. <laughs> again. again. I've done a year now. I've done all right. When I started losing weight again last October, I was like, you know what? There's like 200 odd calories in one of those lattes, like 250 or something. I'm drinking 750 calories a day on lattes. So I switched to Americanos, <laughs> black Americanos, and uh, at first I was like, ah, oh, these are terrible, these taste awful. But now I actually really like the Americanos, so I'm, I'm happy now. You actually pay for three coffees a day. No, not one of them is a latte. No. <laughs> Why don't you just make an instant coffee? Oh, it tastes much better than instant coffee. Really? And it's the experience. See, bro. I'm the kind of person, I like coffee, but I like like a sweet coffee. So if I, just, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between an instant coffee and a Starbucks coffee. I just oh. like the sweetness of the vanilla syrup. Nah, I, see, I occasionally, Anna will get the stuff with the sweetness and I occasionally have a sip and I'm like, ugh, it tastes disgusting. Really? Man. Oh, it's like ridiculous. Do you drink sweet. tea? No, I don't like tea. See, I, I, I wouldn't be able to, I, I wouldn't get three teas a day. I think that would be oh, such a waste. That would be a waste. No, that is the same. It's just a tea bag with hot water. Yeah, but some people like tea. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is it's the, it is the same as making it at home then, isn't it? Literally is a tea bag with hot water. It is the exact same. With the coffee, at least when I go to Starbucks, it's Starbucks special coffee, it's the beans. It's not like instant You're coffee. paying for the experience as well, I guess. Yeah. You know, going into the shop. I enjoy it. You know, speaking to the barristers. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Yeah. You know, people watching. Breaks watch up my day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, might, I might give it a go. You should. So what would your advice be then on... What, what's it like living with Perry Sean? Because she's obviously, you know, it, she's a bit of a celebrity. She earns masses of money. What's it, what's it like living with her and being... Um, we're like, you know, passing ships in the night because I'm really busy and she's really busy. So what we do is... I mean, well, first of all, I should, you know, it's brilliant. <laughs> you know, it's really good, you know, living What's with... What's it like living with that? I yeah. don't see <laughs> no, it. No, but we're, we're both, you know, we're at a point in our lives where we're both super busy building, you know, businesses. So what we do is, you know, we go on holiday every three months and we, we have a three month... We work for three months and then we take a couple of weeks off, 
you know, just to chill, relax, spend time, good quality time together, and then we go back to work again for three months and do our thing. So it's, 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 it's really busy, and there's always something. I, I, I'd say there's rarely a day where it's like, ah, we're both not doing anything today. It will always be super... A lot you know, of days where you're not doing anything. Yeah, a lot, of th- a lot of days where I'm not doing anything. I'm, you know, I mean, I guess you could say I'm part-time. And no, I, knowing I, you how I know you, I'd say you're part-time. Yeah, unless unless say, watching cricket counts as work. Yeah, I'd, say, I'd, I'd proudly say I'm part-time, actually. Yeah. Well, that's what we did it for. So does she work harder than you? Uh, yeah. Interesting. She does. Do you know, so would, she, would you say she works full-time and you work part-time? Yeah. But it's slightly different, I guess, because we haven't got kids or anything. So, like, I'm not like, you know, not there's anything wrong with it, of course, but I'm not at home, you know, looking after the kids and doing my, that stuff. Would you be there if you had kids? Would you be a stay at home dad? Well, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, you know, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> why not? If she earns more money than you and works harder than you, works longer hours than you, why not? Because I've, I've, you know, I still, I don't, know, I still have a, <laughs> I still have a business. Still, yeah. you know, I still work, but I just don't, you know, I'm just more part. I'm, I'm at home doing, you know, not a lot more times than when she's not doing it. Well, m- most people have got. I was looking at actually at some stats earlier. Most couples now they both work, right? So I think it was seventy-seven percent of parents both work in the UK, um, and half of them. The, the couples that work, they both work full time, and then forty-five percent, the guy works full time and the woman works part time, and three percent, the woman works full time and the guy works part time. So you are in the three percent. I am, aren't I? Yeah. But I don't, you know. I like that. I want to be part time. That's why I got into property. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, but when I'm at home, I'm not like, you know. Wiping down the sides and you know cleaning and you know doing housework. Well, that'd be work then, wouldn't it? Well, you no, we that. Pay, well, exactly. Part-time. That'd be work. Then I'd be full. It'd be like I work part time on property and stuff. Then I'd be you know part time at home cleaning. So we have we have a team. Yeah. So we have you know we have and some of it's our family. So we have you know my sister's a assistant for Perry. We have a mum who does our cleaning three times a week. So you know a lot of my time is spent working on the property business, but also doing events with Samuel. That's another thing, talking about spending money, that's another thing I spend my money on, is stuff like that around the house to make our quality of life better. So we have a cleaner that comes every day, housekeeper comes every day, we've got a maintenance guy who does the gardening and the bits, the DAD, because I'm not regular DIY. Are you regular DIY? Oh, no, I'm terrible. Yeah, I'm Awful. Terrible. Like, if you, had, if you hired someone and they'd done a really bad job, uh, like, you know, Painting the wall or putting something together, I would be wor- I'd be ten times worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. So that's another good. But I like to spend money on experiences. I yeah. Like to with Samuel, experiences, and it's like for me, having to finish work and then go and do the housework or do you know whatever is like. I, I like to spend money on experiences. I also like to sp- I like to spend money on travelling. Yeah. But I like to travel in luxury. Yeah. Just you know, not just because it's luxury, but also because like flying. I was I, I was having this conversation with someone a few weeks ago. I can't remember who it was, but they they were like, "Why would you spend thousands of pounds on business class flights when all you're going to do is sleep?" And I was like, "That's because you can on business. I can't sleep." Yeah, I, I said that's the reason yeah. why I'm spending that money so that I can sleep, and then when I get there, I'm refreshed. Yeah, and also the experience. You know, like business class is just. Man, I remember the first time I flew, and I just thought, Do you know what? It motivated me because I'm, it, it, from my experience, once you fly a business, I just think you can't. Oh, man, it's be really tough to go back and fly economy now. See, I would still fly economy on a short haul flight. When I went to Barcelona earlier this year, I went on economy. I agree, short haul, but you can't, you can't go business. You can go business on short haul flights, but it's not the same business as a long haul flight. All it is a bit of extra more legroom. Well, I was right. I pay for extra legroom. Yeah, I pay for extra So I was, I was sitting like on, because all business classes on a lot of short, short haul flights is... It's basically like premium economy. Well, mate, it wasn't even that. The one I went on, it was the first few rows, they just put the seat, there's three seats, they put the seat belt on in the middle seat, and it's like, you're not going to sit next to anybody. <laughs> Literally, that was it. And I was sitting in the row behind them, where I'd paid for extra leg room, where the door was, with all this leg room, no one was sitting next to me anyway as it happens, and they were, were there 
like paid, I don't know how much, probably wasn't much more to be fair, but they were in the business class rows ahead of me, I had a better seat. Yeah, I, I just think, I remember the first time I bought a business class flight, and, I, and when I went there, it's just a different experience. You know, oh, it's, you, you, it's quick, you go, you have your own private lounge, you, you check in a lot quicker, you go straight through security, they give you the warm towel when you're in the seat, they give you better food, then you land and your bags off first because you're business, and I just think you can sleep, you can lay down. That's the big thing for me, to be able to sleep on the plane. Yeah, and I just think. Like we flew back from Vegas, um, and we left at like 11 o'clock at night, and being able just to put it down, sleep for six hours, oh. And I think once I did that and I experienced that, it, it motivated me then to think, if I'm going to travel again, which I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to do everything I can to go business. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So any final tips then for Tim with your partner? Um, I think find out what each other's strengths and weaknesses are and what yeah. you can bring to the table. From my experience, I think if you, if you have separate businesses and you, you know, you're, what am I trying to say? If you have separate businesses, I would take things slow and see how things progress. I think if you're just starting out and you're wanting to go all in with your partner, I think do what you did and you know see what other, each other's strengths and weaknesses are, see what you both bring to the table and have a clear agreement of what you're both going to be doing, what the responsibilities are with an exit. Yeah. Another thing you can do with business partnerships in general is rather than just going into business together, do a deal together. So we often say married in business or a deal by deal basis. Yeah, do so a maybe deal. do a deal and then first. See, oh, how did that work out? How did it work out doing some business with them before you go all in? Yeah. A bit like, you know, you wouldn't if you were wanting to marry someone, you'd date first. Yeah. You wouldn't just go, ah, oh, um, yeah, we know each other. Let's get married. Well, have you seen the programme Married at First Sight? <laughs> okay, some some people might, but go on, no, I haven't. Oh, I haven't either, but I know there is a program about it. Okay. You know, when I'm part, when I'm because I'm part time, when I'm at home, I don't watch <laughs> Married at First Sight. Yeah. But some people do do that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I'd highly not recommend it. I'd say date first, and in the same way, if you want to go into business with someone, with your partner, whoever it is, I would recommend doing some stuff together first. Yeah. Before committing and going all in. I've got a final question for you. Go on. And it's a one-word answer and you can't spend too long thinking about it, and we're not having a big debate about it, but all we need to know is you have, um, you know, you're a, you're a, a rewards member at Costa, yeah. and a rewards member at Starbucks, and you have three coffees a day, yeah. which is ridiculous. Right, what? how is having three coffees a day ridiculous? That's well, having three coffee. coffees a day isn't ridiculous, but going to Starbucks three okay. times a day, yeah. which is better, Costa or Starbucks? Starbucks. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Nero. Nero? Oh. Costa. Well, let's see. Uh, hands up for Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tax avoiders in the room. Brilliant. Hands up for Costa. Okay, so it's, oh, wow, it's, it's about 50 50. Starbucks, but similar 50 I like both, but I prefer, I prefer Starbucks. I prefer Starbucks. But, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take a Costa. Yeah, I'll take a Starbucks. I like both. Well, that, what a great way to end the show. Guys, thanks very much. See you next week.